So one of the best books that I've read you know, in the last five years, I would say it's in the top five for sure, is Atomic Habits. And for me, it, it just shook up in me that there's, it's not all about like sheer will and force. Yeah. Which to me, it was hard because if I didn't do something, there was like, like shame, regret would come in because it was like, I just wasn't enough. And so it was really helpful when I read this book to be able to say there's so much more at play that I can stack the deck in my favor to make the wins more often. Yeah. I think you're a more disciplined person than I am. I think you're, sorry, you're a more disciplined person than I am. Like for just sure, by nature. For sure. Yeah, no I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, when someone's vulnerable with you, Stan, you shouldn't go, yeah. oh yeah, no, yeah, anyway. But no, I, I think by nature, some people are more disciplined than others. Yeah. And I think what's great about Atomic Habits as a book, and we're not going to just talk about the book, we're going to talk about some lessons and principles and, and science that it talks about and how it applies to advisors. But the reason I think that Atomic Habits is a great book for anyone is as a more disciplined person, you found a lot of value in it. As someone who I, I'm getting more disciplined in my in my age, and I'm realizing God only gives me so many years, stop wasting them, right? That that it was really helpful for me as well. Mm. And I think somewhat for the same reasons. It's like it took you to the next level, but if someone who just doesn't feel like they're really good at habits, it's understanding them and then giving really practical ways and understanding even language to how do you build a habit. And it's funny because it's such a universal, you know, we're doing this episode around New Year's, you know, 2023 to 2024, and it's going to come up. But I would just say part of the attitude of our listeners and those who view the show is that you do want to build new habits. You're the kind of person, if you're listening to this, that you are driven, you know that you're capable of more. And so today we're going to talk about some really practical things to build new habits going into the new year, because I have an assumption that I'm going to build amazing habits in 2024 even more than I have now. And I think you have that expectation. I think our listeners have that expectation. I can't remember where I heard somebody talk about, like if you're not building a good habit, you're yeah. building a bad one. Yeah. Like we're all building habits. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of this is not us challenging you or ourselves to say, hey, get in the game of building habits. It's like, you're in it. Yeah, you like, have Whether you know it or not, you're building a laziness habit, a yeah. complacency, all these things are happening. How do we start shifting that in your favor to where you're getting more of the outcomes you want and limiting the amount of times you're going to look back and be like, why didn't that just work out in my favor? Right. Because average actions will yield average results. And how can we, you know, don't, you have to have to conquer the mountain overnight, make some small incremental changes that we know will have a better result over time. Is that a better use of your time each day? Is that you wake up a little bit earlier? Is you start exercising? There's so many things you can put in because if you do the same thing long enough, it becomes a habit. My hope for myself and also the advisors we coach is that we help them make better choices so those eventually become just good habits. Absolutely. And it's, I love the way you said that, that, that it, it goes from a choice to a habit and habits aren't av actually choices anymore. They're just, you just do it. Yeah. And, and what I have found to be true is if someone you know, whether it's you or someone you know, mm -hmm. is late every time by 10 minutes, that's a habit. They're not actually late by 10 minutes, like that's their on time. And so what I know to be true is if you can always be late by 10 minutes, you can always be early by 10 minutes. It's just which habit do you want, yeah. right? If you know you can sleep in every day until this, if you know you can not work, like there's, there's ways to do this. So one of the first laws, and again, the book Atomic Habits talks about this, the first law of behavior change is to make it obvious. And so part of this training we're gonna talk about today is not some like really difficult thing or secret ninja move. It's no, if it's gonna function it has to be really obvious. Like, let me ask you this question. Where do you put the keys for your car when you're at home? On the table right next to the door. Right by the door. Yeah. Why don't you put them in the closet in your bedroom? Not as convenient. I was gonna be, it, it would be a less obvious place to go. Like, I need to leave. I'm going to go walk to the bedroom, walk yeah. to the closet, in this drawer next to the socks. Like, put it in an obvious place. Mm -hmm. Because here's what's funny. Even in my busyness, this happened last night. I go to get in the car in our garage and I'm like I don't have my keys because <laughs> I had a bunch of other stuff in my hands like you put it in the obvious place so if you want to change something make it obvious the second is that the two most common cues and can cues, we stop before we move yeah, on from that yeah I'm trying to think from an advisor perspective um, as we relate this back because yeah this will benefit every part of your life you know whether it's yeah. like hey working out you know they'll talk sometimes about just get to the gym like getting yeah. there yeah, is we'll the, really that. the decision yeah. but when it comes to an advisor's business I think there's a level of awareness that I would start with that you need to hopefully be able to call out in yourself or ask others, what are the areas that most need attention? 
because you may not not even know yet yeah. what could be the biggest thing. And then we can move on, like, how do I make that an obvious habit? But I think before you jump to that, take some time to try to figure out, like, it's, uh, I'm dragging most of the time. I don't eat right. Um, I'm late to meetings. I'm, I'm, I'm prepping late. What are the things that are most impacting you in a negative way right now? Yeah. yeah. Is, is, I think, a way to start off on, because you're not going to do 10, but is there two? Yeah, and I, I think I've mentioned this before in other episodes, but one of the foundational principles of all 12-step programs is the first step is always the same, which is acknowledging you have a problem. Mm-hmm. And until you know your weakness, you'll never win. Yeah. Right? You can't win. And we have almost every advisor we work with can tell us they are not where they want to be. 100%. We've yet to work with an advisor at, at many levels, you know, some of the top in the country where they're like, I've arrived. There's always some desire for something a more efficient business, more quality time with their family, but also they don't want their business to suffer. The issue is usually the behavior and the accountability and the tracking yeah. is, is where the work is done. So we're going to talk about that now, behavior and tracking in the time. So um, I'm going to read off sort of some stats about this, and then we'll dig into it um, about deciding on which habit you're going to change and, and such for advisors. But the two most common cues, and cues are things that remind you to do something different, are time and location. So if you find yourself at the gym in workout clothes, you're going to work out, <laughs> Most right? Likely, yeah. uh, that's a location thing. Well, the cafe is comfy. You can only sit there. And, <laughs> no, but even no. getting there is a win. Even if you yeah, just sit in the cafe, then right? you do right? a good job. Uh, but time and location. And so the reason new habits are formed and talked about so much around New Year's is because it's a natural time uh, reset, right? Like, very few people will go, oh my gosh, August 1st, <laughs> what am I going to do different in August? Like, yeah. it's a very obvious reset. The calendar literally changes. It's yeah. like, it is a different year from one second to the next, literally. So it's scientifically proven that new habits are best formed when there's a time and date assigned to them. And this is a mm. foundational thing that is missed by so many of us who want to build new habits is that we rely on willpower instead of a time and a date. And so- But you're not, you're not saying, wait- Till January 1st to make any changes. No, this is what's great, is you can make a new habit starting today. That's right. Uh, And we'll talk about some ways to do that really easily. The mistake around new habits is that a lot of people will pick a date, but then they'll fail to implement that they need to have a time and circumstance attached to that date. So they'll say January 1st. But like, unless your new habit starts on that moment, then you're not actually going to build a habit. Hmm. It still lives in that. And we talked about this before, like the stages of, um, I don't know, dedication, wherever it was. Uh, but it was like, you. so many people are just living in the want. Hmm. They don't actually change anything. So there, here's an interesting um, uh, term. And then there's a scientific study that I want to explain. Uh, it's called implementation intention. So when and where to act on your desired actions. That That's an impl- implementation intention. So this is the this is the study they did. They had three groups of people. In the first group, they said, um, "You're going to, um, uh, you're going to, your new habit's going to be that you're going to exercise," and that's all they said. They said, "Just commit to," and they said, "Okay, great, we commit to that." The next group, they said, "You're going to commit to exercise," and then they gave them some stats and sort of like you can do it. They gave them external motivation, right? And then the third group, they said, "You're going to mo- you're going to start exercising. We're going to motivate you." And then we want you to choose a date and time to implement the new habit. Mm. The first group, 35% of people started the new habit. The next group who, who got a bunch of information and motivation, 38%. Hmm. So motivation, external motivation was not that effective. 91% of the third group actually started exercising. Hmm. And so it's, it's, it seems simplistic, but it's unless there is a time and date for the new action, it does not exist. I mean, literally. It does not exist unless you put a time and a date towards that new habit. And if you create a new habit without a trigger or a new place, that it's not going to work. It's like buying um, new furniture for your house, but then you don't make room for the furniture. Like there's no room for it in your life. So there's no room for a new habit. You're not going to form the new habit. It's just going to live in that sort of wish world. Yeah, I'm thinking about ways... So the date and the time, which was led to the biggest change in results. Right. What is that as simple as saying, you know, as of next Monday, I'm going to tell my team, this is our new process. Right. And they have to hold me accountable to this thing. Or, because there are some people that can do this in their mind. I think in my experience, I've always had to pull other people in 
And I think the other people have been my kind of date and time Mm -hmm. versus me just saying in my head, Sten, it's going to be next Tuesday at this time. Like I have to make it external. I have to put something in motion. Sometimes that's been like hiring a new team member, right? which is like there's no going back from this or it's letting somebody on the team or my life say, hey, this is what I'm doing now. Uh, The difference is the date and time came into place when you said, hey, Jamie, this is our time for the new hire. Mm -hmm. Like we need to have a new hire. Like she's going to start to put time into that to build that new situation. Mm -hmm. And the difference is fundamentally people will say they want something and then they won't meet their desire Mm -hmm. in reality. Reality is not in your head. Like reality is what you do. Yeah. Right. And so that- I think that's the most fundamental piece as as a business owner, which we all are, if you're an advisor listening, yeah, you can pull other people in to help you be more effective and to accomplish things. That's the who, not how principle. But I think at the core of this, what I don't want to miss is is this does require us. Like it requires you to take ownership and take action. Yeah, that even if you said, "Hey, I'm going to hire somebody to pick me up and take me to the gym," and then they're going to roll me in a wheelchair up the you know ramp to get right. me, like you're making it as easy on you as possible. At the end of the day, you would still have to stand up and do the hard work. Yeah. And so how do we make it as easy as possible? But like, hear this, like there will still come a point where you have to deliver. Um, and, I, and I find that's a stumbling block for people. Like when the push comes to shove, like what is the obstacle? I think the obstacle is literally that you are not creating a space in your life for the thing that you say you want. And so everything that you're currently doing will still exist there. You so cannot you're not prioritizing it. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, it, it is. You're letting whatever other habit is there is winning out. Is winning out. Yeah. And just to acknowledge that. And I, I would say this, like I have I have two kinds of to-dos that exist. One is on a list and the other is on a list that is attached to my calendar. Hmm. Which one gets done? Yeah. The one that's attached to my calendar. Now, some of them, they don't have to be, they really don't have a due date. And so they can sort of just sit out there and when I get them, mm-hmm. but man, do those things get stale? Like, yeah. so my point is that th- we know scientifically that when you make a date with yourself, and even if you miss that one, then you can get the next one, yeah. right? And so the reality of this is you have to decide on the habit. You have to be as specific as you can. Then you have to decide on how much time it will take. What is the scope of that? And so this is why people generally pay their taxes on time. This is why people generally don't miss their dentist appointment because before you leave the dentist's office, what do they say? Let's get your next appointment on the books. Mm-hmm. Like not, not only just good business, that's just like good habits. Yeah. And then I think about this. Your clients know when they're going to meet with you for the most part, Sten. Because you've implemented surge meetings. Mm-hmm. And so you go, yeah, this is what I'm going to generally meet with Stan mm-hmm. and his team or Chris or whoever. Right. Because they have this habit of here's the date and time I'm going to meet with them. So the alternative is that you wait until you're motivated. And what is true is if you were already motivated, you'd already be doing this. Yeah. Right. So I want to get really practical and um, talk about um, ways that, and this is, a, this is a detail from the book. I think it's about chapter five or six talks about habit stacking. Mm. And it says that if you want to build a new habit, try to attach it to a current habit. So he talked about um, someone who wants to, to read more, that if you already have a habit of making your bed, make your bed and then put the book on your top of the pillow. And so when you go get in bed, you're like, oh, the book's there. I'm going to go do that. Mm. Right. So your new habit is I'm going to put a book on the bed after I get done making the bed. Yeah. And that will be, that will lead to reading. Mm. Okay. People talk about this, putting your workout clothes out before the night before, yeah. right? Um, and so uh, for advisors, I'm that, that's that's called habit stacking. B.J. Fogg was the one who um, first sort of popularized that. So I'm, I'm curious for advisors, and we have different ones that are really kind of broad and more specific. What is a way that advisors can start to build a healthy habit around prospecting, around this ongoing activity of I need to be meeting new people. I need to be intentional about getting out of my office, either, you know, through technology or uh, through just not being here. Uh, What is a, what is a way that someone can start to build a habit and maybe they attach it to an existing one. You know, they don't come in the office until they meet, you know, they they go have three appointments or they go stop by three places first. Mm -hmm. But, but what's a way that a, an advisor could build a new habit around prospecting versus what they're probably doing, which is mostly probably passive? Yeah, I've, I've found with a lot of advisors that, and I've been susceptible to this, is that I just find enough busy work and I prospect, but then I get some leads and I kind of work those. 
that, that it's taken me a long time and it's taken me involving other people to say, here's set prospecting time. Interesting. Like, cause it's one of my superpowers for the team. And so anything that's getting in my way, I'm trying to get, get it off my plate to create mm. this free space that I then have to it's still on me to deliver in that moment. Yeah. And so I think step one would be you saying on Tuesdays and Thursdays from two to 4 PM is creative prospecting time. Okay. You then have to decide, can I do that in my office? Is there too much distraction? Do I need to get out and do something in order to make that happen? Because prospecting time can also be, I'm going to learn from other people on how they prospect. I'm going to write new content. So prospecting, in those hours when I think about it, it's not just I'm randomly calling people. Right. I'll go through my prospect list at those times and say, who's warm? Who's it time to touch base with? But I'm also spending more of that time dreaming of like, why are these people not saying yes? Yeah. What process can I create? How, how do I need to speak with them differently? Is there a new idea that I can package and provide them to create action? And so, so I think there's freedom in just saying, I'm going to set this time aside to kind of sit in and question prospecting yeah. and, and yeah. what my method is. Yeah. And some of that could just be, I'm just going to learn. I'm going to go listen to a podcast on, on prospecting. I'm going to read a book. But you have to set time aside for that because what happens to most of us is we prospect, get some business, stop prospecting to work on that business. Right. And then by the time that business is somewhat delivered, we have this lull. Yeah. And in a perfect world, we're all getting five qualified calls or leads per week yeah. that we're picking and choosing two of the best ones from. And we have more business than we want. Right. And we have a waiting list. Right. To do that well, it requires a system. That will build over time, but if you say Sten, and this is true for most of our advisors, I'm not a good, consistent prospector, Yeah. or I just randomly go out, hope I bump into people, and then similar to golf, every once in a while it works, I hit a good shot, and it keeps me coming back. Sometimes the you know the hitting the blackjack hand is the worst thing that ever happened yeah. to you, because yeah. you think you can just yeah. keep winning that way. And, and so with prospecting, I would say set time aside, and be okay with sitting in there and not feeling like you're being productive, because the habit will be... You're now giving your your mind time and space to dream a little bit. Right. And I would submit what you said in the very beginning of that I really loved about, like, you'll do other things. Like, you will fill your time. Mm-hmm. Like, I, the kind of people listen to the show, you're not the kind of person that's like, I just, I, I, I work 12 hours a week. You know, like, I just, I golf all the time. Like, mm-hmm. I, the kind of people that we interact with and I get to have calls with in our community, like, they like what they do, love what they do. They're good at what they do, but they're not building, many of them are not building in that dedicated time to prospect on a really regular scheduled basis or just get better at prospecting. That's why I think prospecting as a as a, as a a title is better, as you said, that, you know, get better at prospecting. It's just not just doing the prospecting. Because, yeah. you know, professional athletes don't play every time they touch the field or they're on the court. They practice. They actually, actually practice a lot more than they play, right? Except for Alan Iverson. Who practice. practice Talking about practice? So uh, what I did realize about myself is I needed accountability in that. Okay. And so in our team meetings every Monday morning, we have all dis- determined what each of our superpowers is. Yeah. And you can call it whatever you want, but like what is the lane that you most bring value to the team? And then we all have to check in on what we did last week and what we're planning to do in order to live in that superpower. And mine is biz dev prospecting. Yeah. So I know come Monday, I'm going to have to report. Right. And that helps me say, okay, I want to bring it for the team. Right. So I'm setting time aside, but it helps me make that time more effective, mm-hmm. especially as life's happening, that there's some outside. I've let it be known that I want to do this, and then people check in on it. Right. And so, again, the way to, to adjust this is you don't let – when you schedule your habits, the other thing is that you remove obstacles that can creep in because you just go – like literally, if if you have a habit of – not prospecting or not doing the harder thing, let's just say you set your prospecting hours from 11 to 12, three times a week, Mm -hmm. okay? That when someone says, hey, can we get an early lunch on Wednesday, which is easier than prospecting, you say, you know what? That's not going to work. I can meet you at 12 or I can meet you on Tuesday or Thursday. Yeah, you protect that time. Right, because it's already there. And the problem is if it's not already there, then you go, oh, I'm just going to go have lunch with a friend. And I still even do where something's there and I'm like, I'll just move that there. You start compromising it and that that's not ideal. So if you're so serious about it and see the value in it, you will protect it. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I know before we close, what I know to be true is if you're listening to this and you're saying, I want dramatic change in the past, I've tried on my own and I get partway up the hill and I slide back down. I'm left with like, man, did I give it all I got? And it didn't work again. And the, the, the kind of those limiting beliefs creep in your mind. Similar to personal training, if you hire a trainer mm-hmm. that'll come drag you out of bed, get you to the gym, like your results will be 
tenfold. Yep. That's harder. That's more of a commitment. That's an investment. The best advisors I've ever worked with have coaches. Yeah. And, and part of the reason we built our coaching program is, and, it, and it's hard and it's it intense and you track numbers and you like, if you take that route, you will get the results you want. Yeah. If you stick in it and welcome that feedback, the alternative is you just trying to do it on your own, which, which could work. And these are the principles we're giving you. But if you want to take the elite path, if you want to fix the system in your favor, you take that path and make that kind of decision. Yeah. And it'll be the best thing you ever did in your life. Your future self will thank you. Still a lot of advisors are like, what's the easier path? How can I kind of tip my, put my toe in the water? There is a way to do that, and there's principles. This book, this book teaches it'll help that be a better outcome. But I would almost argue that's still somewhat average. Sure. And it's a better average than probably what you're doing now, but just, just so everyone knows, there's no excuse. There is a better, harder path that you will look back someday and say that was a turning point in my business is when I when I received feedback, coaching, and was getting uncomfortable consistently. Yeah. And I think we all know that. As you listen to this and I say this, you're probably like, I, b- I believe you, Stan. I can agree. So the only question is, are you willing to do that? And then if you're not, sit in like, okay, well, why am I willing to just continue to do this myself? Yeah. 